Hi, Midge. Hello? Yes, it's Jeffrey. Hi, Jeff. What do you need? I'm calling because I have a question for Barbie. Uh, actually, uh, could you hold for sure. a Sure. Yeah, I'll hold. Yes. Uh, yes. Hello. Still Jeffrey Great. here. Yes. What do you need? I, there's something that I need to get from uh, the house and Barbie already took away my keys. Yeah. Okay. When do you need it? Tomorrow. Alright. Yeah. It's some exercise equipment um, in the basement, okay. like some weights. Okay. And they're yours? Yeah. They're mine. Um, sorry, Jeff. I'm actually going to have to put you on hold. Sure. Yeah. I'll hold. Yeah. Again. Shalom, Chavarim. How do you do? I'm Jeffrey Giraffe. And I'm so excited to see you here at the toy chest. I was just bringing over some extra toys. Wanna lend me a hand? I hear you're coming up on a very special birthday, the big one three. Very soon you're gonna have a bar mitzvah. It's so exciting to be a Jewish boy approaching Jewish manhood. But what does it mean to be Jewish? And what does it mean to be a man? We live in a time where these questions are getting harder and harder to answer. But with the help of some very special guests, we'll try. On today's episode, we'll talk about what it meant to be a Jewish man in the past so that we can better understand what it means to be a Jewish man in the present. So let's head on into the toy chest and together we'll answer the question, how do you Jew? Life is such a mystery, see how the questions flow Facts, traditions, history, I only want to know How do you Jew? How do you Jew? How do you Jew those things you Jew? How do you Jew? How do you Jew? How do you Jew those things you Jew? Generations come and go, the chosen people thrive Every boy bar mitzvah man must keep the dream alive. How do you Jew? How do you Jew? How do you Jew those things you Jew? How do you Jew? How do you Jew? How do I Jew like you Jew Jew? Now's the time to learn to love to learn. How do you Jew? Welcome to the toy chest. Watch out for that pile of teddy bears over there. This place is getting pretty full. But that's what happens when you have to shut down an international toy chain. But you know what they say, when Hashem closes a door, he opens a window. We're here to talk about your journey into Jewish manhood. You have so much to think about as you approach your special day as a bar mitzvah boy, like, will I write a speech that makes my ima proud? Will I read all the words of my Torah portion correctly? And how do you dance the hora? These are important questions. But we're here today to talk about something even more important. Yeah, like how many zeros will be on the end of Bubby's check? Oh, shalom, Mr. Potato Head. I bet you had one of those cheapo bubbies that only gave a single chai. That's 18 bucks for my goyish friends out there. It's Mr. Potato Head, Chavarim. Who the hell are you talking to? There are a bunch of Jewish boys watching us via the internet. So you're hanging out with little boys now. That's a new low. Mr. Potato Head is one of my closest friends here at the Toy Chest. He's been here for over 70 years. That's a really long time. I'm actually glad you're here, Mr. P. Don't call me that. We're discussing what it means to be a Jewish man. What it means to be a Jewish man, huh? Well, bar mitzvah literally translates to son of the commandments. 
So now there are 613 different rules you got to follow. As if it wasn't enough that they used a very special potato peeler on you when you were a baby. We were hoping you could tell us what it was like to be a Jewish man in the past. It was the same as now, only it was all in black and white. And you had to pay for adult entertainment. Mr. P. Why don't you go ask your father? Uh, I would really value your perspective on this. Eh, all right, all right. Well, buckle up, kids. We're going all the way back to a time before you had to buckle up. The 1940s. In order to understand what it was like for me to be a Jewish man, we have to go all the way back to the very beginning. You see, before I was a plastic potato, I was an actual potato. I'm talking about a real root vegetable, okay? In the late 1940s, there was a Brooklyn-born Jew of Romanian descent by the name of George Lerner. And he had a brilliant idea. You know what's annoying? He said to himself, children. I bet I could make a mint from annoyed parents who just want their children to leave them alone. So he took a potato and shoved some pushpins in it and, and made a little face. And he called his invention Mr. Funny Face. He knew he had something special and he did. It was me. Later, Lerner met three brothers by the name of Henry, Hillel, and Hermann Hassenfeld. Fellow Jews, of course. Do you know what those brothers did, Jeffrey? No, I don't. They founded Hasbro, the second largest toy company in the world, next to Mattel, which, get this, is also run by Jews. Elliot and Ruth Handler. Jews! Come on. Ruth Handler created the Barbie doll. I bet you didn't know that Jews run the toy business. Joshua Lionel Cohen, founder of Lionel Trains, Jew. Kenner, founded in 1946. Albert Philip and Joseph Steiner, Jews. Herman Fisher, he's the Fisher, and Fisher Price, Jew. The list, it goes on and on, a whole international cabal. La, of American Jews and the toy industry. You want to go all the way back? What's the oldest toy you can think of? Uh, how about the teddy bear? That's right, the teddy bear. Well, what if I told you that the teddy bear was created by your favorite Zeta Bobby Rose and Morris Mitchum? Jews! They came to the U.S. in the late 19th century to escape anti-Jewish sentiment in Russia. I could go on, but I won't. I don't want to bore you. Anyway, I made Hasbro a cool million in my debut. You know why? Because I was the first toy ever to be in a television commercial. Roll the clip. Hey, it's Hasbro. Hasbro makes toys. What's new, Hasbro? Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head with their own cars and trailers. That's what's new. See, Mr. Potato Head has a car and boat. I wasn't always a potato. Back then, you could use whatever you wanted. Carrots, peppers, and orange. This was when I was only two bucks. Now I'm more like ten bucks. That's inflation. Back then, everything was perfect. Kids loved me. And parents loved their slightly less annoying kids. But there was a problem. You see... Real potatoes, they rot. Maybe mom would come home and discover a smelly ball of mold with a plastic face under Shlomo's bed. And as you can imagine at the time, she would have survived the Great Depression and she wouldn't appreciate little Moshe playing with his food. Even with the brainwashing powers of the television, my future was in serious trouble. How, might you ask, am I standing before you today? One word, stand-up comedy. Did you know I do bar mitzvahs? And for a very reasonable rate. Actually, we're here to learn. Well, get ready to learn some comedy. How the hell do you expect to be a Jewish man who doesn't know any damn jokes? That's how the chosen people have survived. Besides, this is a room full of bar mitzvah boys and I haven't had a gig in months. If you like what you see, you can book me at mrpotatohead.hasbro.com. Tell your parents. <laughs> All right, how are we doing tonight, folks? It's great to be back here. It's been a while, so I'm a little russet. I want to wish a very happy bar mitzvah to Jacob Berkowitz. It's a very special day, a very special time. What do you call a 13-year-old potato? A tater tot. But seriously, it's a very special thing to be a bar mitzvah. You're moving from the age when you stop playing with me and you start playing with you. 
Now, you may start noticing some changes. It's alarming, but it's perfectly natural. It's organic. Unless you see an extra set of eyes down there, then you have to see a medical professional. Last week, my doctor asked me if I had been engaging in any high-risk play. I don't know, doc. I once left my lips in Polly Pocket's Easy Bake Oven and they got a little crispy. What do you prescribe for that? Ketchup. Now, I'm a good Jewish American man, a strong man, and I believe a man should bring home the bacon and the sour cream and the chives. And that brings me to my next section of Holocaust jokes. Whoa, 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 okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Potato Head. Now, Mr. Potato Head, there are many different ways to be a man. You're telling me? The other night, me and my wife were both Mrs. Potato Head. Mind-blowing. Gives fingerling potatoes a whole new meaning. Whoa, uh, all right. Can you tell us more about what it was like to be a man in the past? All right, all right, all right. So, there I was. Mothers all over the country were sick of their little children playing with rotting vegetables. I was very nearly kaput. And then a miracle happened. Plastics leapt to the forefront of American life. In 1964, the Mr. Potato Head kit came with the plastic oblong lump you see before you today. After that, nothing could stop me. I became the most popular toy in U.S. history. Hasbro has sold over 100 million of me since my introduction in 1952. For me, being a man has meant being tough. They don't like me as a real potato. I develop a hard plastic shell. I'm impenetrable. But it's also okay to be vulnerable as a man, right? No, fuck that. Who the hell told you that? I didn't get where I am by being a softie. I had to be hard. I'm gonna be around for millions of years. You know what they say about plastic, it doesn't degrade. You throw me in the ocean, I'll be there forever. That's what being a Jewish man is about. It's about being durable, it's about sticking around, it's about never apologizing for who you are. And I've encountered a lot of anti-Semitism in my day. They don't like the way you talk. They don't like the way you look. They keep trying to switch my nose out for something smaller. Well, I like my big Jewish nose. Mr. Potato Head, having a big nose is not... Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I I'm getting a phone call. Uh, I have to take this. Just one moment. I'll be right back. All right, smoke them if you got them. Yes, hello, Jeffrey Giraffe. You know, they asked me to get yes. rid of my pipe yeah, during the yeah. Great American Smoke Out of 87. Oh. So what are you kids doing hanging around Jeffrey, huh? Oh, He's a terrible yeah. influence. Do you know that he drove his dad's yeah. toy business yeah. into the ground? He doesn't talk to his family. His dad disowned him. He's living in a fucking warehouse. What was that about? My dad died. Jesus.